This episode of Life Hacker is brought to you by Gamefly and Netflix. Welcome to Life Hacker. Today is all about remote access. We're going to use our smartphones as a remote. We're going to set up VNC to control our computers remotely. Set up a virtual private network for accessing your home computer from on the go. Remotely schedule BitTorrent downloads and turn your computer into a high-tech security system. Set up Wake on LAN for waking up your sleeping computer from another one. And of course, the downloads of the day. So, let's get started. Modern smartphones are great at doing a lot of things. You can make calls on them, you can check your email, you can check Facebook, you can tweet. Uh, but one thing that you may not be using it for that they're actually really good at is remote control. You can, for example, remote control your iTunes library using the remote app for the iPhone or other iOS devices or remote for iTunes on Android phones. You can remote control your home computer over VNC, which Adam Dachis is going to be talking about in this episode. Uh, you can also remote control your home theater uh, if you're using something like XBMC, Roku, Boxy in your home theater setup. There are apps for either device that you can hook up to those and remote control them from the comfort of your little handheld gadget. Check out links for both the iOS and Android versions of rem other remote control options at Lifehacker. So VNC is a really awesome technology where you can control one computer remotely from another. Now this is really easy to set up because you just download a server like Type VNC or Real VNC as well as the client software. Um, so you can remotely control your computer from a Windows PC or if you want to set it up on a Mac you can just use Mac OS X screen sharing which you can turn on from your sharing control panel in the Mac OS X settings. Now, if you want to control it remotely, you have to forward some ports on a router, um, and we'll include a link at the end of this segment so you can learn how to set that up. But basically how VNC works is you just type in the IP address to the computer that you want to connect, hit connect, type in your username and password if necessary, and you will get that remote computer and control it from wherever you are. And that's how you set up VNC on your computers so you can control them remotely. Hungry? Thirsty? The refreshment stand is open. Want to try out the latest games, but don't want to spend money for something you might only play once? Check out Gamefly, the largest online video game rental service that offers you a choice from over 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. Plans start at only $15.95 per month, and Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. There are no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Plus, if you really like the game, you can simply click Keep It on the Gamefly website and the game is yours at a discounted price. Best of all, Lifehacker fans get a 15-day free trial when they go to www.gamefly.com hacker and sign up right now. You'll be supporting the show and get to try out some awesome new games. It's showtime. A lot of workplaces set up virtual private networks or VPNs that allow their employees to access the local work network from, say, their home or a coffee shop, really any place remotely. Uh, VPNs set up secure encrypted connections to this network and basically when you're connected to a VPN you can access that network as though you're on the same local network. It's really really handy in a lot of circumstances and you can actually set up your own VPN uh, using a free tool called Hamachi which is available from the company Logmian. Uh, once you have Hamachi running and set up on all of your various desktops, you can access them as though you're again on the same network. So for example, I'm at Adam Dutchess' apartment right now. At my home computers, I've got Hamachi running on my laptop, on my desktop, uh, and actually on a Windows computer. There's an absurd number of computers running right now at my home house, even though I'm not there. But uh, as you can see, they're all sort of listed here in my Hamachi setup. Uh, and one of the cool things about this is that, for example, I could open my iTunes library 
and I can see my shared library and I could actually play back any of the music from my library in Adam's apartment, uh, even though it, all that music is just sitting at my computer at home. This is really handy if you've got a laptop and you're, say, at the library or the coffee shop and it doesn't have a lot of hard drive space, but you want, say, still to have access to all of your library. Um, it's also handy for screen sharing. The other nice thing about Hamachi's VPN is that all the traffic sent back and forth is encrypted. So if you're on a public Wi-Fi network, for example, and you're browsing your home computer, say you're accessing some files as though they're local files. No one can snoop on what you're doing and kind of get your files, get your private data. So that's just one of the cool uses for Hamachi. Hit up the link at Lifehacker for more. So BitTorrent is a great way to download large files, but the nature of downloading large files is that they often take forever. You could, if you're a hermit like me, sit there and watch it download all day on your computer, but most of us don't have that kind of time. What's really nice is that our favorite BitTorrent clients, Transmission and MewTorrent, let you set up remote controls. You can actually monitor those torrents from any web browser. So you can see here, I actually started a download at my house, and now I'm at Adam's, and I can see how far my downloads progressed. I can pause downloads, resume them, or even add new torrents for my computer to download when I get home. I can even view them from my phone. For more information on how to set it up, Check out lifehacker.com. So if you want to turn your home computer into a security system so you can monitor things while you're away, there are a couple things that you need to set that up. First, you need an always-on internet connection, and second, you need a webcam. To get started, you can use various kinds of software for your platform. On Windows, we like Yawcam, which can upload images to uh, an FTP or do live video streaming, so you can check in on what you're doing. It also does motion sensing, which is pretty cool. Um, alternatively, if you're on a Mac, you can use FaceTime and an Apple script to have FaceTime automatically answer calls, and you can see what's going on through your eyesight even when you're away. So that's really all there is to it. It's just a piece of software, some hardware, and an always-on internet connection to get your home security system up and running. Good evening. It's intermission time. Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, allowing members to instantly watch TV episodes and movies over the internet and stream them directly to a bunch of devices like the Xbox 360, the PS3, Nintendo Wii, BoxyBox, and more. Netflix offers you immediate gratification. As an unlimited member, you can instantly watch as many movies as you want for one low price, and there's never any late fees or due dates. As a new member and a Lifehacker viewer, you can get a free trial membership by going to netflix.com slash lifehacker and signing up right now. You'll be supporting the show and opening yourself up to a vast library of quality entertainment available right at your fingertips. And now, it's showtime. Hello, I would like to know how I can access my computer at home at any time without wasting electricity. If you're out at a bar with friends and someone brings up Big Trouble in Little China, what an awesome flick that is. It'd also be awesome to have it downloaded from Amazon or uh, somewhere else when you get home. But is your computer on? Turn it back on with the magic of Wake On Lawn. Your friends will be suitably astonished. You'll need a system hooked up by Ethernet cable. It won't work over Wi-Fi, sadly. You'll also need a router and some kind of smartphone to do the remote triggering. iPhone or Android will do, but most platforms have some kind of wake-up tool. Next, check to see if Wake Online is enabled in your BIOS settings. Boot up your system, watch for a message about a key to hit to enter setup, and hit it right as you're booting up. Poke around, make sure Wake Online is enabled, hit save and exit, and then reboot. Now let's walk through setting up on Windows 7. Hit the start menu, choose control panel, pick network and internet, then click network and sharing center. Click the change adapter settings option on the left, find the local area connection, right click on it, hit properties, then do the Configure button on this next screen and head over to the Power Management tab uh, where you can click to enable Allow This Device to Wake the Computer as well as Only Allow a Magic Packet to Wake the Computer if they're not already checked. Hit OK and you're done. On a Mac, setup is just one step. Open System Preferences, head to the Energy Saver section, and then tick the box for Wake for Network Access. All done. For any computer in your house, head to your router configuration page. Not sure how to get there? We've got details in the post. You may get a basic info page, or you may be prompted for your password when you start making changes. If you don't know your username and password, you can usually look it up at routerpasswords.com. On my router, I found a WOL setting under the Administration tab, where I could enable my home theater PC to receive packets from my router. 
That meant I didn't have to know the IP address or the MAC address of the device. If your router doesn't offer that, you may have to get a little more specific and set up your port forwarding. We'll explain how to do that in the post. Oddly enough, it's actually easier to set up your router so you can wake it up from anywhere. Most modern routers have built-in support for Dynamic DNS, a service that keeps track of the IP address your ISP gives you. Head to DynDNS.com, sign up for an account, and enter that account into your router's DDNS section. Search for Wake on Lawn in your smartphone's app store, and you'll likely find a few options, including freebies. Install one, enter your PC's IP address or your DynDNS server name, and you'll be able to wake up your system from anywhere and expose your friends to Kurt Russell's cinematic masterpiece. It's time now for the downloads of the day. Let's see what's on the list today. First up, we have Pocket Cloud for Android and iOS. Pocket Cloud is an app that lets you remotely access your computers via your mobile device. Next up is Remote for iOS and Remote for iTunes, which is for Android. If you want to control your iTunes library directly from your mobile device, these are the apps you're going to want to use. Last, we have Mobile Mouse Free for iOS and Remote Droid for Android. Both of these apps turn your mobile device into a wireless trackpad for your computer. This is especially handy for home theater PCs. Enjoying the show? Subscribe to Lifehacker on YouTube at youtube.com slash lifehacker for the latest video from Lifehacker as soon as it's available. And that's it for today's remote access episode. See you later. Bye-bye.